The Sun and Moon Daycare and Diner was one of the many Fazbear franchises spread around the United States. It was located close to a big suburb that was surrounded by beautiful lush fields. The diner was open from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. and its daycare closed at 6. The restaurant was only closed during the fertilizing season for obvious reasons and on Wednesdays. As the name implies, it was both a Fazbear diner and a Fazbear daycare. On its ground floor, food was served and eaten and on the second floor, parents could drop off their toddlers for a few hours while they were at work or had better things to do, like the tennis instructor. The reason the diner and the daycare were separated like this was so not a single customer would be inconvenienced by screaming children or, most importantly, so not one adult customer needed to be quiet during nap time. Nap time was from 12pm to 2pm, during which the shutters of the second floor closed. Due to the small size of the Sun and Moon daycare and diner, it was short-staffed and only had one dedicated animatronic. The daycare attended himself. Outside of the machine there were a single human cook for burgers and fries, two human waiters for personalized meals such as birthdays, a Fazbear sales representative to make sure the franchise was profitable and well managed, an engineer on standby should the daycare attendant require any repairs, named Kevin, whose job was to travel from Fazbear location to location for simple repairs though he primarily worked at the giant pizza plex that was located just two hours away from the diner. And finally, there was you, the proud owner of the place. Anything else was filled in by the lovely and ever useful staff bots. As the daycare and diner's owner, you had multiple roles to fulfill. One, to keep the sales representative happy, so your location wouldn't be shut down. Two, you functioned as a quasi-night guard. 3. Your Fazbear franchise owner contract try saying that three times in a row required you to be in the restaurant for at least 10 hours on work days and check up on the place for one hour during days the diner was closed. This included daily during fertilizing season and every Wednesday. Your fourth duty was customer experience. If there was a complaint, you were required to look into it. Your final duty, of course, was management. You were the one hiring and firing. You were the one making sure your employees got paid. And most importantly, you made sure none of your employees dressed up in old bonnie suits and started murdering customers. A clause in your franchise contract you were assured over and over was there just merely as a joke. What it actually meant was to make sure the employees worked with a smile and were always on time. You liked your job well enough and honestly, not having to deal with most customers yourself was a godsend. You just sat alone in your office slash employee lounge all the time. As closing time was approaching, you and your night shift would soon begin. You always came to the diner at around 7 p.m. and stayed until 6 in the morning, when the morning prep began. Thankfully, your life wasn't all work. After you finished your regular duties, like inventory and ordering restock, your night shift was just sitting in your air-conditioned office until daybreak. Well, most at least. As at around 2 a.m., unusual activity was reported in the daycare on your security tablet. Quickly you switched the cameras on your office computer. Uh, was the only concerned noise you could make. The lights were turned off, which wasn't normal. The lights mainly remained on during the night, so when you saw the machine in his night mode scurrying around like a giant spider making a mess of things, Made you drag your hand down your face. Sure, the attendant had his quirky moments, but this was ridiculous. Usually, if Moon was out, 
He would never make a mess on purpose. That was more a sun thing. Moon was smart enough to know it definitely was not nap time now, so he wasn't searching for rule breakers. You needed to figure out what he was doing, in case something needed to be reported. Sighing, you grabbed your security tablet, left the office, and walked up through the daycare. Your loud footsteps and the ruckus upstairs were the only things you heard. You made no effort to hide that you were coming, but when you walked through the threshold, there was silence. Not even a little ring of one of his belts. You went to move your flashlight into the room when it was yanked away from you and thrown a few feet away from you. What the hell? You... You started but were cut off by bright red eyes right in front of you. You can't be here right now. Get out! Moon grumbled, moving to completely block your path. What do you mean I can be here? This is my place. Also, why did you sneak up on me like that? You poked your finger in between his eyes as you spoke. Moon only paused before he picked you up and placed you out of the room. I, I mean, I don't want you in there right now. I'm not done yet. You scowled and went to grab your flashlight, pointing it just far away enough from Moon to where you could see him but not bother him. Done with what? Making a mess of the daycare? I need to stop you, you know. Right after you had said that, Moon looked like he was appalled by what you said. Confirming it with a How dare you? I would never. It's my daycare. Why would I ruin it on purpose? No, you don't understand. You seem to have forgotten something. I'm preparing something. Preparing what? I'm not telling you until I'm done. Moon angrily crossed his arms and looked away from you. You could swear he was pounding. You deadpanned. You knew you needed to keep a relatively good relationship with the machine. It's not like he broke anything and obviously will clean everything up. But this was out of the usual. You were already terrified of the thing. AI was kind of scary. You decided to leave the animatronic alone with a just don't break anything before returning downstairs. Huh. The machine just gave you an order. Successfully so. You were going back to your office, but you had nothing to do in there, so instead you decided to tidy up by cleaning tables and sweeping the floors. Sure, it was already clean, but why not? The nagging desire to return upstairs just to make sure that nothing terrible was about to happen was unbearable. You were constantly glancing at the stairway and even deliberately sweeping the same area around it repeatedly so you would be right there. That was until you felt something at your back, startling you a bit. You looked behind you and saw a foam ball rolling away. Immediately looked to the top of the stairwell and saw Moon staring down at you. You are allowed to come up now? Uh, please? Moon talked slowly before crawling out of sight. You quickly followed suit, and when you got to the top, your eyes widened. You don't know how we got them, but string lights were hanging from the ceiling around crudely drawn finger paint papers strung up spelling out Happy Birthday, of all things. Even more paintings had set up around the daycare, and one of the tables stood an origami crane. Okay, whose birthday is this? I don't remember there being one scheduled for another two weeks. You furred your brows as you looked at the animatronic, who crouched right under the birthday sign. Moon only chuckled. Silly owner! This isn't for a child! It's yours! Did I throw that ball too hard? 
Do you have brain damage? It wasn't your birthday. Your birthday was, in fact, tomorrow. You blinked. Wait. It was 2am, wasn't it? Well, it was technical right now. Oh, Moon. You scoffed. You didn't need to. Really? Your last two birthdays happened during fertilizer season, so you actually never realized the animatronic was programmed to recognize it. But... But it made you something! The board crawled to the table and picked up the paper bird like a precious gift. It's for you! You took the bird with an awkward smile. Thanks. Do you like it? He asked quite loudly, almost sounding like sun. You are jumped out at sheer amusement. I mean, yeah, I guess. You are surprised yourself at your own reaction to this. I like it a lot, I think. I do regret to inform you that I do not have the ability to make a cake. You shrugged and set the bird down on the nearby table, making a mental note to place it on your office table when you return to it. Moon, you really don't have to. Please, Miss Owner, I'm programmed to respond to any registered employee birthday. If an employee does not register their birthday, they will not get a present. Ah, you automatically registered your birthday by signing the franchise contract. Also, Sun so dearly insisted I interact with you more. Moon started to fidget with his hands. It would have been nice if you had known that beforehand. You sighed and looked around the daycare. The pictures the robot had been setting up depicted him and what was most likely you on various occasions. That uh, definitely didn't happen. After all, one looked like you were with him on a merry-go-round, and another depicted the both of you as mermaids. Ugh, it was so disgustingly sweet. But there was one thing. Moon, this all has to be taken down when the place opens at six. I'm aware of that. And you don't mind that? He shook his head. Can't I just spend some time with my dear owner? Dear owner? <laughs> uh, better not overthink this. What did you have in mind? You asked. The daycare attendant's eyes narrowed and with a cheeky tone said, I am aware that you enjoy anime. You blinked. Wait, was this why I was asked about my hobbies when I accepted the franchise? It certainly was one of them. I am not allowed to give any more details on this, though. You rubbed your eyes in annoyance. The stupid corporation. Miss Owner? The robot tilted his head curiously. Wait, so you're programmed to basically sit down with me on the sofa and just chill? He blinked and nodded affirmingly. Your heart jumped. Well, that actually sounded like a lot of fun. Taking the paper crane, you went down to your office with the robot right behind you. He didn't even need our formation. With your smile, that was all that he needed. In your office, you pushed the employee sofa into the right angle to look at your work computer. I'm out to watch my shows with a goddamn robot. You mumbled. Why were you doing this? But you couldn't help but smile. This was a little exciting. Definitely beat having a regular night shift. Quietly you laid down on the other man, while the robot sat down excitedly in front of your feet. As the show began to play, the robot had thousands of questions. Or at least... That's what it felt like. For one, you needed to explain the concept of anime, then the fact that those drawn people weren't in fact not real, and most importantly, 
that he could in fact not climb into your desktop screen to help fight the bad guys. But it was pleasant regardless. Oh, what is happening? He asked suddenly. You furred your brows. A kissing scene between the anime protagonist Heihachi Ozoku and his beloved Hanako Hitomi Tanaka was taking place. Well, uh, Heihachi defeated the big bad dragon guy, Lord Thing, and now they're confessing their love to each other and they're kissing. The robot looked at you and you narrowed your eyes. What? Can we kiss? You blushed hard. What? Why? Is it because they love each other? I'm programmed to love you, Miss Owner. <laughs> you made sure I have a place to stay and gave all the fast bear requirements. You didn't have the heart to tell him that this wasn't really how this worked. Though, this could be a huge controversy. Similar to when the pizza plex had burned down a few weeks ago. Quickly worked out a plan. You set up, gulped, and then spoke calmly. So, um, kissing is a show of uh, affection. It's something people do when they love each other. The robot's face played turned upside down. But, but, you raise both hands. You only have one special someone you can kiss. That is very important, as otherwise your special someone would feel really, really bad if you do it with someone else. Honestly, I only explained it like this so he wouldn't start kissing the goddamn toddlers because of some misunderstanding. Can I kiss you then? You bit your lower lip. Well, uh... That would make me your special someone? Do, do you really want that? I do. You close your eyes for a second. You made absolutely sure that there were never ever any sex scenes in the shows you were probably going to watch with him in the future. You sighed. Giving up your resistance. Sure. Fine. He jumped back. What? I didn't think you'd agree. Seriously? Are you getting shy now? No. Maybe. <sighs> You're the one who wanted this. You sighed. And he shifted in his seat. Maybe if you were a little more enthusiastic. Oh, so now he wanted requirements for this. You blinked. Deadpanned. And then it's something you never thought you'd do. Well, technically it was a close second to kissing your own robot. Gently humming, you laid down on his lap. His mechanical legs felt hard on your back. And you kind of wished you had put a pillow on them first. But this wouldn't stay for too long. The machine was completely overwhelmed. You could hear his cooling system begin to power up as he straddled on his lap. What's with that face? You purred. You wanted some enthusiasm, right? Well, this was more fun than you expected. Then, without warning, you cradled his neck, gently pulling him closer to you. Your face is mere inches away. Is this enough enthusiasm? <laughs> I guess? You rolled your eyes and pushed him down. Your lips touching his. His faceplate was cold and hard like the rest of his body. Not to mention his face was... Um, static. And like that of other Glamrock animatronics. You could hear the endoskeleton teeth click behind it. Thankfully, though, your body didn't reject it since it wasn't outright unpleasant. 
What was unpleasant was the machines excited shaking, but you didn't mind. There were far worse things you could think of than this. After a tender moment of silence, the two of you separated. And how was it? You hushed, unintentionally sounding incredibly seductive. Though you didn't even need to ask. You kind of relished in teasing him. His body jerked. I liked it. And before you could object, he put his arms around yours, pulled you up, putting you into a tight, cuddling position. You were quite literally mooshed between metal and a hard place. You sighed exhausted as he began to playfully hum. Thankfully, two minutes later, the credits theme of the anime began to play. Oh, it's over. But if you let go of me for two seconds, I can play the next episode or maybe an anime with more spicy material. Oh, I do like spicy food. Thank you to the people who are supporting me on Kofi. You guys are keeping me alive.